the company of curlews. Chapter 6 Castles Made of Sand Ringo Bob. I've said my goodbyes to die. Not much in the way of a catch, but we worked well together in the night. dai has got a day job now. Dreamin's butty, delivering all over town. Fishing all night and lugging beer barrels all day. I grab a few hours sleep in my bed and it's, it's breakfast with my loved ones. Eva gets off to school, a big school now, grammar school. She's doing well, proud of her. Branwen doesn't let me down neither. Does me well on the food front. Salty bacon from Brian's. Always two eggs and crispy fried bread. Delicious. I'm fed like a king. I need some money, Jack Love, she says. Need to get some food in for supper. Oh, don't worry about supper, I say. I got some nice lapwing this morning. Oh. No, no, no. Come on, she says. I need some cash for essentials. Milkman is round later. He'll want paying and I haven't paid him for a month now. I'll go up the water board later, I say. I got some cormorants last night. They'll pay me for them. My grandmother would have had a cormorant for her supper, don't you know? Oh, no, she says again. This afternoon, then. Don't let me down now, Jack. Will you get some coal in, please, love? Put the bins out, too. They're round this morning. Yes, love. I'll do them now. I'm struggling a bit. Money isn't quite going round. Eva needs school uniform and books and stuff. And things are a bit tight. Could be better, I say. Up the waterboard then with my cormorant heads. I'm going to have a pint first before I go anywhere though. I deserve it. If we have a good night, I need to celebrate. And if it's not so good, I need a, a drink to get over it. Open early there. It's Wednesday. Ambones are in town. June Fish, mother-in-law, sullen she is. Gives me a pint, but she's not happy. I'm going home now, I tell her. Just to win, I'm thirsty. Have a hard night. Bloody mother-in-law's for you. She brushes past me, stool in hand, a bucket and cloth in the other. Going to wash the front window, she is. Look after the bar for five minutes, please, Jeff. You can see her silhouette from inside, washing the dimpled window. Suds all over, then a shammy. Ah, oh, there's another silhouette. Oh, Branwen has turned up. Teen well, Jack, ma'am, she asks. I'm, I'm not a Welsh speaker, but I know enough. I, I, can hear, I can hear them through the top windows open. Have you seen Jack, she says. No, darling. June talks English. I've been out here for the last ten minutes. Good girl, June. I take it all back. I'm getting too old for this now, you know, she says. He's left these cormorants out the back in a bag. Said he was coming to town to get some money for them. They start talking Welsh. They always talk in tongue when they got something to hide or they're gossiping. I move from the bar and sit by the window. I get the gist of what they're saying, if you know what I mean. I asked him to get some coal in, he hasn't. Oh, I forgot, man. I asked him to put the bins out. He hasn't. Ah, yes, yes. Uh, I'll do it when I get home now. Leave the dishes, he said. Well, I didn't say I was going to do them, did I? June repeats. Vim good to everything Branwen says. I know. I asked him for some cash. Pay the milkman. I don't know what to do, ma'am. I can see June... Coming off her stool, going into a front apron pocket and bringing some money out for Branwen. No, ma'am, says Branwen. She's proud, mind. Vint, her mother goes. How much? 
Oh, it's not fair, says Branwen, taking the money. Her mother is comforting her now, putting her arms around her. I finish my pint, sharpish, and cut and run out the back door before I get caught. Five years go by. Some fishing seasons are good, others not so good. Eva grows up, gorgeous girl. And slowly my wife, my loving wife, Branwen and myself, start to drift apart. It turned nasty. Blazing rows, then saying that I, me mind, hadn't shown her enough attention. And then my drinking came up. I told her, one or two, that's all I have. I deserve it. Then it was the bills again and the mortgage. And I told her, I put a roof over your head. You tell me when there isn't food on the table. She didn't have an answer for that, did she? Give up the fishing, she says. There's no money in it any more. Get a proper job. That's what Ralph did. He's given up the fishing. He's got a proper job. Ralph? What's he got to do with it, I said. Then it was that I controlled her and I knocked her confidence and I was always undermining her. Well, I said I was the one who told you to find a job in the first place. Who do you think you are telling me what to do? The bills were brought up again. Why hadn't they been paid? So I told her. You get a job, good girl. Get out and do some work. Bring some money in. She did, didn't she? She bloody loved it, didn't she? So all she talked about was how well she was doing, how the televisions were selling like hotcakes. On a Friday, she'd book herself in for a hairdo. Every Friday, mind. Ridiculous. Started buying herself clothes, new shoes, flared trousers. I smell perfume. She said that Ralph, Mr Richards, was very pleased with the performance in the shop. It was Ralph this and Ralph that. Then, she says, Ralph says I don't know my husband. He says that you are the reason he has the scar on the side of his face, that you attacked him with a glass. That's a lie, I said. I'd always wondered how he got the scar, she said. I didn't like to ask. He was giving me a lift home. I couldn't stop myself looking at his face. And then I just blurted it out. He went quiet. He didn't say anything. I said, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have asked. It was an accident, I said. That's what he said you'd say. How could you? I don't know you any more. I don't think I ever knew you. You know me better than anyone, I said. The scar goes down the side of his face, she says. Shame, really. He's such a kind man and quite good looking, too. You don't know what he's really like, I say. He's a smarmy bastard that's in it for one thing. Do you realise what you have done to him? She gets closer to me and screams and spits into my face. It's not just physical, she says. You scarred him emotionally. Emotionally, I say. What are you on about? Why don't you just pack your bags and go to him in his big house? Yes, she says. That's what I might just do. He's had his own back on me, hasn't he? He's turned her head. <laughs> <laughs> 